to stay. Hello and welcome back to Beyond Boards, a podcast dedicated to the actions and interests of skaters beyond skateboarding. My guest today is an absolute legend and doesn't really need an introduction. Fred Martin, aka French Fred, is simply one of the very best skate videographers and photographers of all times. After making three iconic skate videos in the late 90s and early 2000s, which are Minik Mari for S Shoes, Sorry for Flip Skateboards, and Bon Appetit for Cliché Skateboards, Fred slowly transitioned into photography and has been sharing his time between photography and filmmaking for the last 20 years whether for personal projects or brands such as Leica, Hermes, Element and many more. I had the opportunity to sit down with Fred in Lyon in February to discuss his career and ongoing projects. So here's my conversation with Fred Martagne. I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much, Fred, for seeing me today and having me in your in your house. Uh, honored to, to meet you in person and have you as a guest. So yeah, uh, you have a long history in skateboarding. It would take forever to go through everything. So we'll try to go. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll try to go a bit faster on the Flip Sari and Minik Mari um, era, basically the end of the 90s, yep. beginning of the 2000s because you've also talked about the, all the all that time on different podcasts before mm -hmm. uh, but yeah just to get us started can you tell me a little bit about how you started skateboarding uh, I think you're from Lyon originally is that did you grow up here and did you pick up a skateboard in Lyon yes exactly I actually grew up in this neighborhood where we do the interview today I first uh stepped on the board well actually i didn't step on it i just put my ass <laughs> <laughs> sit on the board it was like a you know plastic boards back in the 1982 83 something mm -hmm. like that and then um it was a friend from school we were in like third grade yeah so of elementary school sure and then uh yeah one kid had a, had a skateboard and i don't know one day we We had a bet about something, and he t he told me if you win, you win the skateboard. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. I was not particularly interested in in skateboarding. It was just like a toy, yeah, just yeah. Uh, something we would do on occasions. It was brand new uh, in my life, and then and then I did win the bet. I forgot what it was about, but uh, so that's how I got my first skateboard, which was like a you know a small uh, narrow plastic skateboard. And at the time, we were just sitting on it and then doing downhills in, in the building where I was living. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how it started. And then, and then of course, uh, a more uh, better introduction to skateboarding was through the movie Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Which was like, wow, skateboarding is cool and they have bigger boards and it looks like it's, it's rolling better. And then they're actually standing on the board. So that was like a... Like something that uh, a motivation to look at it differently, mm -hmm. and also one day in my neighborhood, I was crossing the street and I looked up all the way back in the street. I saw a skateboarder standing on a ball rolling, mm -hmm. and he was crossing the street. And then I was like, "Hey, w w what's gonna happen?" He was going towards the sidewalk with, oh, yeah, with yeah. the curb. And an ollie he or? was not like slowing down and then he just uh -huh. ollied up okay. the, yeah, yeah. The, the sidewalk and I was like wow <laughs> wow what magic. is that wow that's magic and yeah. then that's that was the thing that made me want to look into like skateboarding what it what it could be what it yeah. was there was like a hidden world about it so mm -hmm. I was like wow And also the um, the plastic toys, they were plastic balls. They were really not rolling super fast. The bearings were shit, and and I saw yeah those people with wider boards. So I I believed oh those American boards they like they, these are the good ones to, yeah. to get. This so, is what I should get. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do you remember what what year it was when you first started? Was it end of the eighties or mid mid eighties around there? Or? So when I started for real with like uh, like doing tricks, doing, and stuff trying like that? to do tricks with a proper board, it was like uh, early nineteen ninety. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I was already like uh, kind of messing around with a skateboard before for many years. Sure. And it's also because one one day, uh, uh, one time, one summer, we went on a school trip to England. 
Mm -hmm. And I really, I didn't know nothing about skateboarding. It was in uh, in Nottingham. Okay. And yeah. we 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 passed in front of a skate shop in which there was a mini ramp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. I see people skating a mini ramp. It was the first time I see that, like yeah. something like a skate park or a mini ramp. And one of the, the kids with us, he knew about skateboarding. So he was telling all the, 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 the names of the tricks and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, there's like a full on world about skateboarding. Yeah. It's not just like a toy. Sure. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like a, there's tricks, there's people, mm -hmm. sketch ups, community. A whole culture behind Magazine. It. Yeah, a whole yeah. culture. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's fascinating. And. And I was lo looking for something to do in my life, uh, kind of like different than what, yeah. th what I was doing with my friends that uh -huh. were doing more like normal things, classic things. So mm -hmm. I was really quickly attracted by skateboarding. Yeah. Were there a lot of skaters uh, in your school when you were growing up or was it kind of a more, uh, how do you say, marginal kind of activity? Uh in elementary school, there was no one really, but I, I really, I found out about real skateboarding afterwards w when I was in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. So then there was, there was a few people, yeah. So, okay. yeah, there was a few people in my, in my school and in my neighborhood, in my city. And there was a skate park, there was a mini ramp. Okay. So, so th there were skaters around you, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the first time I go to the mini ramp, mm -hmm. there was like people skating really good. And it, it was actually, uh, I don't think there was Jeremy Daklan, okay. but uh, yep. there was like um, uh, other people like uh, Mick, who was still running a uh, Wall Street sketch shop. At the time, he was working at uh, ABS yep. Yep. sketch shop. Sure. So I, I ran into this, these people who were like really good. We were part of, they were part of the, the scene. Uh, they were like the the best guys in Lyon, and uh, mm -hmm. so that was. And I was like, oh, there's actually really good skaters in Lyon as well. Mm -hmm. So that was inspiring. Did you meet uh, JB Gillet around that time, or was that a bit later? Or because I I know you you kind of grew up watching him skate, or yeah, uh, shooting him at least after a little bit. Yeah, then I I quickly not meet, but like run into this this all these guys at the the skate park in Perrache, La Piste. Okay. Oh yeah. Which yeah. started around the same time, 1990. So street skating was still not like a a, a thing. Right. Okay. W didn't boom yet, so everybody was going to the skate park. So that was like the main spot, you know, where people will go skate all the time. Mm -hmm. And where you will you run into these guys, mm -hmm. JB, Julien, uh, Jeremy. But I was really like uh, impressed because I was not super good, and they were like getting super good. Yeah, already. Uh, yeah, yeah, already. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so yeah, I was uh, uh, scared to to go skate there sometimes. You know, yeah, it I'm was sure. <laughs> better to go skate in in some spots in your neighborhood. Yeah, with uh, some of your friends that that you know less intimidating. You're on the same level. Yeah, yeah less yeah. intimidating. Sure. <laughs> Did you actually start shooting and filming at the same time or did one thing happen before the other or and was it around the time when you started skating or did that come a bit later maybe? Uh, yeah, no, photography uh, came much later than videography. In the early 90s, I was um, I was also a lot into snowboarding with my friends because we're in Lyon, we're like uh, an hour and a half from, from the, the Alps. ski resorts. And so mm -hmm. we will go a lot. And then uh, I think I first started to film just for messing around with my friends uh, snowboarding because uh, another guy who was from the skateboard scene, David Gratalou, yeah. who lives in the neighborhood and he's always been living here. Okay. And he actually had a mini ramp back then before I started skating. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was always in, a lot into um, new technologies and steel. So he's, he's always like, he always has the new, the new toys, the good, new, good the new gear. things. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he, at the time he had like a small camcorder. So that's the first time I got to try a, a camcorder to film with it. And then... Um, and it was like when we went snowboarding one time. It was just like one day, one session. And I was like fascinated by watching watching skateboard videos because you know when you at first when you don't know about it, skateboarding, you don't know about yeah. the culture, you don't know about the scene and the, and the scenes in different countries. You know. Yeah. The first time I was like impressed was like I I, I saw a magazine in in a bookstore, like mm -hmm. a French skateboard magazine. And I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. There's a lot of stuff and, and professionals in America. And I was like, oh, that's that's really cool. Mm -hmm. But then when I first saw a, a video, it was for, with kids in my neighborhood. 
they they said yeah come come home we we can we're gonna watch a skateboard video and I was like oh there's skateboard videos I, I didn't yeah. even know yeah yeah and oh that was like a magic magic time it was like um, I was so impressed with all what I saw I was like wow yeah. so many tricks and cool stuff mm. and it was it was so uh, inspiring and and bring so much motivation that that after watching the video we went out to skate. I was like super pumped, yeah, pumped up, you know, yeah. like crazy motivation. I always yeah. say like it's it's like a, I was on drugs. Yeah, I was like on a completely different uh, state of mind and and yeah. energy. Uh -huh. And we went out and and skated like crazy, trying a lot of tricks, and we just got so inspired and mm -hmm. and the effect that skateboard videos at that video had that one time. Mm -hmm. The first time was yeah. so like powerful that like uh, it it really made me want to watch videos. I was super yeah. like a fan fan of watching videos, and so eventually after some couple of years, I or I I felt like oh I'm maybe I maybe want to try to to shoot some stuff. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. some reasons we're gonna talk about in a second, I guess. Sure, sure. Do you remember what's the very first video that you saw? I think I heard uh, in an interview that it, it might have been a Plan B video or something. No, it was it was an Edge Street video. Oh, Edge Street. Uh, okay. Shackle Me Not, which was I think I saw it in uh, 1991, mm -hmm. and then the Plan B video came out the year after 1992, and okay. this was like a, pff, mm -hmm. this was insane. But uh, yeah, I was I was uh, at ABS works. Mm -hmm. uh, Not workshop, no. <laughs> AB, skate shop, yeah. ABS skate shop, because it means NA board shop. It's like the the neighborhood where it is, mm -hmm. and it's all. It was also partly run by David, who, who David Gataru, yeah, yeah, who had the camcorder. So um, at the shop, he also had like a special VCRs that you could you could mm -hmm. do some editing. Oh yeah, and okay. like a TV set upstairs where you could watch videos. And at the time, you could also rent. Uh, skate videos skate videos right, okay the vhs steps so um, i was renting uh, vhs steps all the time mm -hmm. i was like uh, always asking a friend to to lend me his vcr so i could oh, yeah. i could link them up and then make copies oh yeah, yeah. of the videos okay, sure. yeah i was like so into watching them that mm -hmm. i really wanted to watch them all the time so I, mm -hmm. i made sure to be able to make some copies and because there was like the pal uh Yeah, TV Powell standard versus NTSC, yeah, and yeah. NTSC and the European and, SECAM. and uh, American standards, yeah, yeah. But it was mostly between PAL was European and then SECAM was French. So okay. when you copy PAL uh, VHS tapes to SECAM, then they would turn into black and white. I will, I will oh, always have okay. the videos in, in black and white. And oh. sometimes without the, uh, I couldn't copy the audio sometimes. Uh -huh. Like I had uh, the desk box video, that okay. desk box before they turn into flip. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I had this video without any audio. And I and I, in black and white? white? Mm, maybe, not sure. Okay. But then I did add my, my own soundtrack to it because I didn't have it and I didn't <laughs> know what it was like. So I just put the music I, I liked oh, onto it, sick. like cool, Dinosaur yeah. Junior and stuff like this. So the memories I have about this video is not the, the, the yeah, reality. Yeah, the actual music the actual, that they used. Yeah. Okay, I see. I, yeah. I don't know what they used. Okay. But so there, there wasn't any sound of skating then. It was just uh, just the images. It was for this video, there was this okay. problem of music. But okay, for the okay. other ones, no, I, I had the audio. Okay, okay, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah. All right. So I was so into watching skate videos. And then at the same time, I realized that I was not going to be good enough to be sponsored, you know, yeah, which was the dream of everyone. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, realistic <laughs> about that. Yeah, managing your expectations. Yeah. yeah. And also I knew that in life I didn't care about anything but skateboarding. Mm -hmm. That was really like a revelation, like, oh, that's, yeah. that's really something really cool. For the first time, I feel good about something. I get to meet people. I get to discover my city and, you know, do a lot of things that you don't normally do when you're a teenager. And so I was like, oh, fuck, I have to, mm. I have to find a way to, to yeah. do something with skateboarding or Make walking something skateboarding. Happen. I don't know. But the first motivation, yeah, to when we first, I first picked up a camera to shoot skateboarding in Lyon at HDV. Mm-hmm. I got to rent it through my parents because they were working in a French TV. 
Yes, that's right. That I, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I got to rent a big uh, VHS camera with the big VHS tapes. Oh, yeah. Uh, like with super no, no heavy. Fi- yeah. 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 Normally, it's like a camera you put on sh- on shoulder. Okay. Well, it's the ca- kind of cameras that <laughs> became trendy when uh, Palace started to use oh, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. like that, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> More recently. Yeah. And at the time, yeah, I, was, I used that for a couple of times without any wide angle, no fisheye. So it really sucked. Okay, yeah. So yeah, the first motivation was just to film ourselves, you know, like to do like right. in the videos, like oh let's 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 make a, something we film ourselves, and also it yeah. was like a way to like you know when you skate, you you're a beginner, you you don't know what you look like when you're skating, like yeah. your style. Sure. So it was a way to film yourself and then to 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 try to improve your to style see from a distance yeah. how it looks. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe yeah, improve some stuff, maybe change some stuff. And yeah, the first the first time was really like for this kind of things and 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 for fun, you know, just to yeah to do like the pros. No pressure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, okay, the the scene in Lyon, there's really good people mm-hmm. like JB, Jeremy. Like, there's a lot of really good people. And I was like, why why aren't they sponsored? You know, maybe they they, they should be sponsored. Yeah, yeah. And then um, at the time, the four one one video magazine started. There was like this first issue that came out. Everybody was super excited about it because uh, yep. it was like one hour long. Uh-huh. It, it was not about just one brand. It, it was like a mix yeah. of everything. You will see like so much at once. Yeah, yeah. And I was it was like, the first uh, time that there was a skateboarding video magazine of that. Style yeah. Or, yeah, 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 and it was kind of uh, representing like the the not completely like the the worldwide scene, you know. It was more like yeah. America, California and stuff. But then mm-hmm. they were traveling to uh, Europe to the contest, and and you will start to see some stuff, some other people. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe in the next issue, if when they're gonna go to the European contest, then JB and those guys when they're gonna go skate in the contest, they're gonna be in the video, and then uh, yeah, it's gonna be promotion for them and exposure you know and yeah. I, was, I was like just waiting expecting to see them in foreign one yeah and yeah. then it didn't happen uh, they, yeah. they were not there they, they, they didn't yeah uh, they didn't make the cut in the edit yeah yeah and i was like ah oh, i that was sucks. so disappointed yeah and i was like fuck uh, what can we do to to help them and and one day at hdv it's it's not like a it's a blurry memory. I'm I'm not sure exactly if it was like this or who I met. I I I don't even know who it was. There was like a skater. He looked like a skater, but he was not skating. But he came to us. He, he was talking in English. Mm-hmm. My English was uh, not as good. It was bad at the time. But uh, mm-hmm. he said he was American and he was working for a magazine. I think it was Transworld. Okay. And and so I asked him, hey, what what do we have to do to f- to find sponsors for skaters? Yeah. Because people here are, are really good. Yeah, and there's he, some good talent in Lyon. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his his reply was, make a video and then send it to brands. Like basically sponsor do meetings. sponsor meetings. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? Ah, okay. Okay, fuck it. Then yeah, yeah. And I, I need to get a camera, mm-hmm. and I need to film these guys. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's uh, that's that's. I'm gonna do that. Mm-hmm. And then let's see, let's see, let's see what's up. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was like uh, in 1994. I was like um, from 93 to 94. I was doing my. Uh, in, I was in high school doing mm-hmm. graduation. Yep. So for one year, it was the only year in my life where I st- I, be, I was like, okay, I'm gonna work in school mm-hmm. to have my graduation. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like an important thing. Sure. We had pressure to to succeed to get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So I almost uh, I kind of like stopped skating for one year to like, focus on your studies. To focus on the studies. Yeah, like yeah. Just skate like really minimum. Okay. And I had a good motivation because uh, one time I spoke to my grandmother. And I was like, ah, I would like to get a camcorder f- to shoot skateboarding. And uh, or also we were going to do a, um, a trip with my parents to Canada, like a family trip, holidays. Mm-hmm. And I told my grandmother, hey, uh, I, I could make a video of, of that, you know, if, uh, if, if I would have a camcorder. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, okay, let's, if you have your graduation, then I will get oh, you okay. a camcorder. Okay, I see. Yeah. So that was like my... my Motivation, right motivation. there. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, uh-huh. um, it was the main motivation to really work in school. Yeah, yeah. And not to get a graduation. <laughs> like, I didn't really care. Yeah, sure. I didn't care much about uh, about, about, about school. About school. I didn't care about anything but skateboarding. So, uh-huh. so I was like, wow, okay. If I get the camcorder, then I'm gonna be yeah. able to film you the can guys start filming and your friends and stuff. And 
Sure. So yeah, I did work in school. I got my graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, my best uh, grade was in English. It was <laughs> my best one. Okay. So I was happy. And then I got a camcorder, and then as soon as I got it uh, in July, I started to film uh, okay. uh, with the guys in Lyon, shoot mm. the local scene. And HDV was not around yet. It was uh, in const reconstruction. Okay. And it, it became scalable in 1995. So 1994, was we, I made the first video, but we were filming at a skate park, mm -hmm. a little bit in the streets. And yeah, we made this first video, which got good response from people from Lyon, from the skate shop. And then we, there was also some, pe some people from Paris saw it, and it showed me like, okay, it's not only the people from Lyon who, who care. It's yeah, also yeah. people from outside Lyon. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, there's interest from other people to... To see those videos. To see yeah. those videos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And What so, was the name of the first video you made, like uh, the, the first local Lyon? Yeah, I was really not creative. And <laughs> I was like, fuck, I have to find a name, a title. Yeah. And at the time, I was listening a lot to the Beatles. So I, I called it the Magical Mystery Video. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. In response okay. to the Magical Mystery Tour. Okay, <laughs> I see, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a pretty cool name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. strange names. The, all the all the titles of my videos were always very strange. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you 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 picked Manik Mari, right? Uh, did you yeah. come up with that name? Yeah. Yeah, strange one, but uh, it, it worked pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people like it mm -hmm. and still like it. So just to finish with, uh, so so you started doing those uh, homey videos, basically, or like um, local scene videos. Yeah. And eventually, you started filming for Four One One, I think. Uh, or at least you send them some footage. Yeah, so I sent them the first video. I got a, I don't know, I got a contact for, to uh, Steve Douglas, who okay. was English, a yep. uh, former pro vert skater, mm -hmm. uh, who was on New Deal. And New okay. Deal for me at the time, I, I really liked that brand. And I was like, oh, okay, 4 and one it's also people from New Deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, we could only communicate with fax oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i will go yeah. to the sketch shop ah can you can i please send a fax so i would uh, type a letter mm -hmm. print it and then we fax it and then i then i will have to wait days and days yeah. before to get a reply and so uh, they, uh, they they told me yes yeah, send send a, send a video mm -hmm. send it over so i did send the first vhs and then weeks or months later, I got like a reply from Steve Douglas, like excited about it. Like, hey, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah. I see a, a lot of cool stuff in this video and, and good skaters. Keep doing like it. Like JB uh... also, he already mentioned JB like, oh, yeah. right away. Okay. And he was like, yeah, but um, we, we can't really use any of the footage because that was also a point to sh to send send it to them. But maybe they could use some, some yeah. stuff, you know, sure, yeah, yeah. in four on one. Since nobody was filming those guys, oh, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, hey, I film them. I send them, the, send you the footage, and maybe you want to use it." But they were like, "Ah, no, yeah, we can't really shoot it. The quality is not exactly what we need. We need, oh, we need okay. better quality." Okay. Because my, I was shooting on video eight camcorder, and at the time the standard was like uh, I hate. Okay. So they were like, "Yeah, well, let's make another video and then uh, uh, show us when it's done." Mm -hmm. So I did, uh, we did that like a year after mm -hmm. and the response from them was like even better. Like, wow, yeah, that's, that's really cool. And now yeah, JB uh, is super good. The, yeah. the video was much better because we really did the step, uh, the move into street skating okay. and into the HDV Plaza. And right, it, right, right. The first video was like, uh, it was not, not of that level. So um, the in second one video year, they would Preston. see the sort of progression, like yeah, it was, yeah. it was really high. Mm -hmm. And then um, they were like, yeah, we still can't really use any of that footage. But like, uh, OK, now we're convinced that there's something to do. So one day Steve Douglas call, called me up. I remember I was at my parents. I was living at my parents. Mm -hmm. And it was like a Christmas. He was like, hey, uh, we, yeah, we talked about it. And uh, so we, we decided we're going to send you a camcorder, mm -hmm. an NTSC, so you can film oh, nice, with really. it. Okay. Because that was also the problem. I was not shooting on i8 and and on PAL. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there was the conversion. We sure. used quality and everything. So they yeah, wanted yeah. to us to film directly in the NTSC. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, wow, amazing! I'm gonna mm. shoot for phone one. Yeah, that's uh, great. Like directly for them, you know, some stuff. And then um, so yeah, it was like a Christmas. I was like yeah. super <laughs> excited. Like, yeah, wow, great news. And that's it. Started to become a little bit more 
professional, you know, yeah. although it was uh, just like... You a, got your foot in the door, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did that, how long did um, did it take between that and getting to film Minik Mahdi? Because I think that happened maybe a few years later, maybe two or three years later. Or yeah, uh, yeah, there was a gap of yeah two or three years because I started yeah to do stuff for 411. Mm -hmm. And I was excited about it because it was uh, working with America, you know, yeah, yeah. for uh, with the Americans. So it was like really opening up like the, um, the horizon mm -hmm. for us. And uh, when did I get that camcorder from them? Yeah, in 1996, maybe? Or, or? Yeah, yeah, 1996, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I did go to a few um, contests in Europe mm -hmm. or special events. And also then they asked me to do, hey, maybe we can do a, a JB uh, Wheels of Fortune. That's right, yeah. Maybe yeah. we can do Paris mm -hmm. Metrospective, which mm -hmm. was in 1998. A lot of different things like that. I also went to America for the first time in 1998. Mm -hmm. So before that, yeah, 1996, I was covering a lot of contests, right, uh, right. traveling in Europe. in Europe, and then which was good for meeting skaters, yeah. you know, the different scenes and and building not, your network. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I did that a little bit for four on one and for myself. And I was I also had my my European camcorder, so I was filming, you know, both. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had like all this contest footage that was kind of cool but uh that was not gonna go anywhere mm -hmm. so i was like hey, maybe i should should make a video with that you mm -hmm. know i knew it was not gonna be like very special because it was only mostly contest yeah uh, i i did film some stuff for it like street skating and 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 some other things mm -hmm. and so yeah i decided to make this video which i called uh, greetings from europe okay in 1996 and Because I made that video, I was looking for uh, some help to, to for distribution. Oh yeah, 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 to get it like out there, like in in, in the US. In, no, in at least in Europe. Oh, okay, in the okay. different countries, but in the SketchUp's, you know. And I needed right. like uh, to work with a brand, so I did meet like a, a guy in Switzerland, Rudy Mater, who was oh, like yeah, an yeah. ex uh, pro skater, freestyler. Okay, and he was working with uh, Ethnies and America, Soul Technology. Soul Technologies, yeah. yeah. And he was like a really good friend with uh, with Pierre André, of course, the that's, founder. Yeah. yeah, and that's why he was. Uh, they were working together. Okay. So I first met Rudy, and then uh, we met many times and during competitions and stuff. And then um, I asked him if, if uh, how to get some help, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, well, uh, we'll come to the Glisse Expo uh, trade show in Paris uh, mm -hmm. next uh, next time it, it happens, and I'll." introduce you to uh, to Pierre, Pierre André. André. Maybe mm -hmm. we can do something together. Okay. And so that's what we did. I did I, I met Pierre André and right away was like super excited like uh, oh yeah yeah that's really cool. Uh, okay yeah I'm going to help you. But then right away he told me oh but um I have a project and uh, I think uh, then you you can be the guy for it and I was like oh really? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like yeah yeah I want to um I always wanted to make a video with the our European teams. Because it he was oh. like uh, he was like yeah I don't want to be like the industry was all based in California yeah. you know and he was like yeah but we for us it's important to sponsor people in yeah. Europe sure. we have a lot of teams so I want to expose showcase, them uh, showcase yeah, yeah, to the world sure. yeah. I was like oh yeah, that's that's super cool so yeah let's do it so I was uh, we we tried to see how we will get organized because it, it meant to shoot like all the teams in all the European well, yeah, countries. I was going to ask you, was it for all brands? Because there's uh, three three shoe brands. Uh, yeah, right? it could be a mix. Yeah, it was a mix. Okay, yeah. okay. it wasn't specifically for S or no. Ethnies or No, America. it was okay. like a Soltec Riders in okay. Europe. So it's a lot of people basically. Yeah, yeah, because you will have to go in every country and yeah. shoot with the guys to represent the, yeah. the, the, not the, scene. the scene, but like yeah. those guys, those teams. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it could only be for a limited time, like a, mm -hmm. a week or two weeks. Ambitious project, yeah. 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 So I, we started in in Spain, in Madrid, mm -hmm. in 1998. And then uh, we kept on going. I went to Switzerland. Madrid was super good. Switzerland was super good. I was in Zurich. Okay. And from Zurich, I went to Germany. And in Germany, it was like a fiasco. It was like... Uh, It was not high quality skating. Uh, it was mm. difficult. The guys were not so into it. Okay. And I started to be like, mm, it sucks if uh, if one country is not like solid, you know? Yeah, well represented. Well yeah. represented. It, it, sure. it kind of sucks. And I started to feel like um, it's a uh, it's too ambitious project to make because 
just from one guy, me, yeah. to travel and, and film with those guys with yeah. limited time, it's not going to yeah. be as good as if you give them like months to film, you know, in, in their yeah, own, with, with their, their local friends, filmers with their local filmers. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I started to not be so so sure about, about the outcome. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Sweden and, and I talked to Pierre. I was like, Pierre-André, hey, I think... Uh, it's not gonna be like uh, as good as it it should be, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, I was shared your I doubts. I was like, yeah, I want to. I think I want to stop. But we were like, shit, we we filmed a lot of stuff. Yeah. But then we were like, oh, okay, we decided to stop, and no problem, nothing was gonna be wasted because then I, I would provide propos for one for one, one yeah. To, they could use I, the footage. I have all this stuff, so then right. they could do um, Stockholm retrospective. I don't know if they do that, but mm-hmm. uh, they will do world reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, with this footage. So okay, so that was like a more. Um, it became even more solid my relationship with Four One. And but at the same time, so I met Pierre Andre, and I started to be legit as, yeah. as a filmer because I was shooting for Four One One. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you went to California for the first time in '98. Was Menik Mahdi a project at that point, or not yet? Were you filming for this European uh, project at that time, or in 1997? There was already a project to make a S video that okay. was in the works in the US. All right, and. For me, as a guy in France, I was asked to film some of the, uh, the S local teams, which was uh, Stéphane Arens, Louis Passin. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I didn't know they, they skated for us at the time. So we did film. I did went to Paris to film with them. We shot some really good stuff. We sent the tapes to, uh, to S, to California. Yeah. And the tapes, they got lost. It's somewhere really like i've never seen them again like this footage i've never seen it again oh and really I, I don't know what we filmed we filmed some really good stuff at, at le dome at la defense at did you ask people at s if they, yeah, they yeah, had yeah. it somewhere yeah or? yeah, yeah. I, I i asked and it never yeah. it never that's sh- strange yeah maybe in 10 years or 20 years it will show up somewhere. yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere in cab- i i did ask like over the years eh, hey, but maybe it's it's somewhere can you can we look yeah i yeah. did look when i went of course when i was working there Never found it, but so this video was in process. Okay, there was a project, mm-hmm. but then it was uh, it was stopped, and they told me uh, like in early 1998, they told me that Mike Manzuri was in in charge of doing this video, but unfortunately oh, Mike okay. was stuck in the uh, UK because he was he was English and he had uh, visa problems, like really complicated visa problems okay. to to get back in the US. Mm-hmm. So they were waiting for Mike to to sort it to, out to come back because yeah. it, it was it was planned that he was gonna make this 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 video. Mm-hmm. That's really what they wanted to do. I was in in contact with them all the time, and after months and months, they said, "Yeah, we're still uh, we're still stuck. We we can't do mm-hmm. anything. Mike is still uh, in the UK." Yeah, because I was asking them, "Hey, so my footage, like, uh, are you gonna use it?" Uh, where is it? Uh, ah, but uh, yeah, no, but uh, we actually lost the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and we cannot make the video. I was like, ah, damn, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> and then uh, I think at some point after months, I was like, hey, I don't know. I, I just proposed, huh, but if you if you stuck, uh, uh, maybe uh, I, I could come and film and maybe make the video, you know, maybe yeah. start to, to make the video yeah, yeah, until yeah. Mike uh, can, p- can, can pick it up. Can or something. pick it yeah. up. Yeah. Sure. And so they were like, yeah, no, no, we want to wait for Mike. Okay. No problem, you know, that was the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think after six months, they called me up like, hey, okay, uh, we, we really stuck. Mike is he still cannot come. Mm-hmm. Uh, that really sucks. But uh, so we have to move on and, and we want to propose you to, to come over and, and, and make the S video. And I was like, wow, wow. okay, mm-hmm. wow, that's okay. That can be really cool. Yeah. So I went to America the first time because of that. They said, yeah, can you come over in a, around the trade show? It was like yep. Octo- September, October of 1998 okay. or November, actually. And so, yeah, if you can come over so we can meet, we can sit down, we can talk about concepts and projects. Yep. I was like, okay, yeah. So I, I did a trip with uh, David Gratalou and, and Ben from uh, Wall Street. Oh, uh, yeah, Benoit Gouzola. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. And so, yeah, I was super excited to finally go to California. I was dreaming about it for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So we went to the trade show, went to Long Beach, and then I went to, to Soul Tech. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was uh, stressing because they were like, okay, so we want you to make the S video and the America video for oh, okay. next summer. <laughs> <laughs> 
like impossible task. And I was yeah. like, uh, wh- what are you talking about? Yeah. Two videos with two different teams. Yeah. And uh, I r- already had this wrong experience of trying to shoot yeah. different teams uh, in different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, you, are you sure? Like, yeah, yeah, mm. we, we really need the America video also. Okay. And so can you make some, uh, propose some concepts? And I was yeah. like, concepts? Uh, for me it was like a, a, oh, yeah. a word I didn't know because oh. you hadn't really uh, had concepts in your first no uh, okay, I, just, yeah, I, I was just filming yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, we use some music we do some sure. editing yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. like a specific ID yeah. behind a video and I was like concept oh fuck I said, <laughs> yeah, no I don't have any concept so I tried to work on some ideas of like uh, intros and, and mm-hmm. so I did propose some things and, and they were like maybe not <laughs> and then we we're trying to figure out but uh, hey I'm, how am i gonna film two teams like what I'm, uh, I'm going to go out with one team for like one week or two weeks and then i switch to the yeah. america team yeah it's like, your it's mind never gonna it. work yeah. six months to make two videos so i think i try i i talk to them like no that's impossible no yeah, way not we, gonna we work. have to focus on one project yeah yeah, yeah absolutely so uh and and so you, then, you convinced them they 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 said uh okay let's just stick to the s video or yeah yeah because i uh, i never worked on the, on both videos okay yeah no i went back to france after this short trip yeah and then we we've been communicating and then finally uh i don't remember exactly when in 1999 i, I came over like mm-hmm. for real to start filming for for manic, for manic mati yeah. okay and only for manic mati okay and so you were traveling there without a work visa, right? You were coming for three months yeah. at a time. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. For a um, couple years or yeah. three years. Well, well yeah. No, c- yeah, a couple of years because uh, then the you whole did the time I was video. making the... Yeah. The whole time I made Manik Mati, it was on a, on a tourist visa. Yeah. So that's why we also... I was forced to leave after three months. Mm-hmm. But then that was a good thing because that, that would uh, uh, push us to film... Be outside more productive. of america yeah oh okay like we would have to travel okay. and then organize a trip there so then i, I step yeah. out of california or uh-huh. america i renew my visa and then oh yeah I, I cannot just go away for two weeks i i, I cannot be spending three months and then go away for two weeks and come back for three months yeah it's like too suspicious yeah, yeah, yeah. so i was like yeah um let's uh spend uh, some months in france or mm-hmm. a year in or europe so because there's a lot of spots and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Actually, when I first came, I, it was a dis- disillusion for me. I was thinking, yeah, I'm coming to the land of the free, mm-hmm. to uh, the paradise for skateboarding. And quickly I was like, oh, but it's, it's not like that. We, yeah. we can't skate here. Yeah, a lot of security and uh, yeah, you need to drive you get kicked out spots. all the time. Yeah, you, yeah. Drive, you drive all the time. In the wintertime, it gets dark at 4, 4.20. <laughs> <laughs> And the weekdays, you cannot get anything. Yeah, like the schools, it's yeah. impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah for and sure. I was like, oh, that sucks. Like in 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 Lyon, we skate anytime we want. Yeah, everywhere. It's much more mellow. Know? Yeah, and we can skate to the spots. Yeah. So um, I was like, oh, the, uh, just send all the riders uh, to Lyon. And yeah, yeah, for skateboarding, I think uh, it's it's more fun to be in Europe, and it will be more productive because we don't get yeah. uh, kicked out all the time. We can skate anytime we want. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, let's uh, get some budget and then send people over for mm-hmm. uh, do some trips, and and some of the people maybe they can stay longer, mm-hmm. so we can really film some stuff and. The sp- there's new spots also. I wanted to not not just skate on on in California, film in California, mm-hmm. but like try to um, to present uh, spots that people didn't really know. Yeah, because like in Lyon, we have really good stuff. In Paris, there's really good yep, stuff. So yep. let's push, you know, those those uh, yeah. those places. Have more and diversity and yeah, yeah, more diversity, and sure. then let's see also how these amazing skaters what they can do there, yep. you know, and because everything has to be done yet, no, yeah. nothing's been done. Uh, exactly. Whereas in California, there was also already like a lot of famous spots, but a lot of uh, already been done tricks. And then um, I was like, let's go to, you know, Virgin Terence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. So you filmed for Minik Mahdi. Do you remember how long it took to film the whole video? Was it like a year and a half like or around six, there? 16 months. I okay. Think. So yeah, we were way beyond the six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Originally planned. And yeah, it, it of course required a lot, lot of time. We wanted to make it like super good. Mm-hmm. Of course, it had to be super good. We had like the best team. We had like yeah. uh, 
the brand was like uh, very important and mm -hmm. everything, you know, for me it was like uh, we have to give all the energy. And then there was times where it was not like very productive and it was not as, I thought it would be more easy to make. Yeah. But there was uh, times where things were difficult. Uh, some scalers were not being so productive. Okay. So we were like, yeah, we, we can't rush it. Like if, if it's not happening like uh, fast, yeah. then uh, we have to be patient, you know, and, and, and allow the right time to, to collect very special content, you know. It, mm -hmm. it has to be special. So yeah. whatever, if, it's, if we have to push it six months or one year, like we can't do the compromise, you know, we mm -hmm. have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And so I interviewed Ben Doren not too long ago, uh, who made uh, the um, the first cliche video yeah. pretty much at the same time as you were yeah. filming uh, Manic Mahdi. Or oh, even before, yeah, came out in 1996. Oh, yeah, 98. I think 90. he told me that uh, he went to the premiere of Manic Mahdi in Brussels, and it was right before they premiered uh, oh, yeah. uh, Europa in uh, Paris. It was oh, like a yeah, few yeah, months yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was, I think I was, was saying 1997 or 2001, that's when maybe. Cliche started, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so, so Ben told me uh, about uh, seeing the video for the first time and that he uh, really enjoyed He enjoyed it very much and was uh, particularly impressed by the work you did with the sound of the skating mm -hmm. uh, that went along with the music and everything. Yeah. So you filmed that video and then how did you jump into the flip uh, video? Did, did that kind of happen at the same time? Because you were like uh, some people on S yeah. were also yeah, that's on why. flip, like Arto. Was that the connection basically to the yeah, flip? Yeah, uh, because uh, I started to really spend time with Jeff Rowley because it, it, it was him and Arto were skating a lot together. So yep. when I was going out to shoot with, with Arto, of course, Jeff was coming a lot. So that's, that's how we met. And then... Um, We also spent a lot of time traveling uh, across Europe uh, for the competitions. And so uh, naturally, when many committee was done, they asked me to help them finish the flip video, which was, oh, already, was already in the works okay. for like a couple of years or, or three years already. But they were stuck also. They were the dance starts started to do it. Okay. And I don't know. I don't know why. He, the Didn't project go, just yeah. stopped. Dan was, was, of course, like uh, my favorite photographer. Mm -hmm. He's the one who was shooting all the Jeff Rowley ads for Vans yeah. and all these epic photos. And mm -hmm. he, he was also like a really good filmer. Like he filmed a lot for Edge Street back in the days and some stuff in Plan B also. So, yeah, they were stuck and they asked me, hey, can you um, help us finish the video? Mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it's only going to take six months. <laughs> and for me, at the time, I was supposed to keep on working for Soltech, like maybe oh, start okay. to move on an ethnic video or okay, America okay. video. Yeah. And things were going to... Um, evolve uh, from there. Evolve yeah. in more like uh, legit because I still didn't have a visa. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, Soltech, they, ne they never got me a visa. And Flip, they were like, uh, okay, so we, uh, you help us for six months, but we get you a visa. Mm -hmm. And this was like... A, I was like talking to Soltech, hey, uh, can I do that? Uh, because they wanted me to, to film with them. And I was like, um, but the flip video, yeah, it's uh, our toys. There's like uh, Soltech writers in the flip video. So yeah. it was like, um, hey, uh, maybe if I work on this video, then it's going to be a good promo for the skaters too. Yeah. So we were like, okay, yeah, let's, let's do it. It's only for six months. <laughs> <laughs> we, we believed at, yeah, yeah. at the time. <laughs> so I jumped into this project. Flip got me a visa mm -hmm. and it took a year and a half <laughs> <laughs> so, again <laughs> so again yeah to make this video it was like a, almost like we almost like started from scratch yeah like pretty yeah. much like we had some footage but like we didn't use much of the old stuff uh -huh. so yeah it was basic basically go, starting from nothing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it took a year and a half and i think that video came in came out in 2003 around there 2002 maybe i'm not 2002. sure 2002 Yeah, yeah, too, summer okay. of 2002. Okay. Or like June or something, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I'd, after that, I was supposed to stay in California and then and, and, and work with, for Soltech. Yep. But since time has passed uh, and I was getting fed up of being in, uh, of living in California, far from, yeah. you know, my, my hometown, yeah, yeah. my friends and family and, mm -hmm. and, and all this. It was so complicated to, to skate and shoot in, in California, all these rules and, and yeah. kick out. and These obstacles with the security yeah. and the, the traffic. And and I was like, yeah. it's so much easier in, in Europe. And mm -hmm. um, 
I was like, yeah, I, w- I just want to go home. Mm-hmm. I, w- I worked like uh, nonstop for like three years yeah. on, on Manic Matty and, and Sorry. Mm-hmm. Like I, di- I, j- I only really, I did that. I only worked. I didn't do much else. So I was really tired and, and fed up. I needed a break. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not going to take a break here in California. I might I might as well take it, uh, you know, back home mm-hmm. and, and see what happens. At least I will be home and since I've been away for so long. So I was like, yeah, hey, let's let's go back to Europe, and s- I had no plan. I was just like, let's let's see what happens, you know. I just want to do it. Okay. No security. At yeah. All. And maybe, despite uh, all maybe, the offers that you could have had, and yeah. by staying in California, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking maybe I'll 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 have a break, and then maybe I'll come back to California okay. after. Oh, so when you went back to Lyon, you weren't like um, firmly decided to stay in Lyon. You were like, I'm going back for a little bit, and maybe I'll come back to California. I had no idea. Yeah, okay. I was just like. We'll, we'll see what we'll happens. See, yeah, yeah. No, okay. no plan, no ID, no sure. nothing. Okay. And so I, I was back in Lyon. I was feeling good. It was cool. But I was like, oh, uh, I prefer to be here than yeah. in California. But it'll be good if I could work here. But yeah. uh, right yeah. now there's nothing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, now there's cliche here. Mm-hmm. And they start to to have a proper team, and it's like a proper brand. And yeah, I yeah. know it's in Lyon. I know these guys, but mm-hmm. but they already uh, they already working with uh, with Ben Doran. Ben, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, after a few months, uh, oh no, actually, uh, yeah, after a couple months or three months, Jeremy called me. He's like, hey, can you can you come over to Cliche? Mm-hmm. So I did, and he then he explained to me that uh, their uh, relationship with Ben was uh, was yeah. came to an end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that they were looking for uh, a new filmer, a new filmer, and I was like, oh, that f- yeah, oh, that's 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 perfect. Crazy. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like um, stars aligned. But first, yeah. we I wanted to talk with them. Like, yeah, let's, we, what you want to do? Uh, what what can we do? And uh, in which way? So we started to yeah to to talk about it. And then Jeremy was like, yeah, um, I would like you to be filmer, but also team manager. Uh, oh which, okay which Both. which uh, the brands oh, were yeah. always want were asking that for that because uh, uh it was a way to uh to pay us maybe a, you know yeah like a two a, man job with yeah, within two man one job. person yeah okay. uh, because of course yeah it, it in a way it's it's very logical uh, the filmer has to be with the skaters all the time and so is the team manager so then you can blend uh, the two jobs into <laughs> one person <laughs> and i was like yeah. no way I, I had to kind of do it uh for for yeah, when for, we're making for sorry, S and, we uh, no, but oh. uh, no for us we had team managers, but for okay. sorry we didn't. Wasn't Jeff the team manager, sort of? He was not the team manager. He was like the driving force. He was okay. like uh, he was very. Yeah. Uh, he had a lot of input. Okay. As a professional, as a. Uh, he was like the, the, an older skater also than the rest of the guys, yeah. I guess. So, so he was like, uh, yeah, yeah un- unofficially team managing sure, sure. in his own okay. way, but more like to really to be as a skater himself to, to motivate the others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when it came to like uh, logistics and organization and all of that stuff, when we go on a trip, there was no one, you know, oh, okay. I had to do it. And it was like a... It was like too, painful um, process. Yeah, yeah, really painful. Too much energy. Like you, you have a long day. You still have to go park the van and, and yeah, stuff like that. You Book know? everybody in the hotel, Book the hotels and, and, and make sure they get up and yeah, and all that. Stuff. And I was like, yeah. that's another job, and I, I can't <laughs> do it. Uh, we have to be I'm focused working on the film already a lot. We have to be creative. We have to have some yeah. ideas. So uh-huh. I was like, yeah, Jeremy, I'm I'm into working for cliche as a yeah. filmmaker, but no team manager, no way. I'll okay. never do that. <laughs> and he said, so, uh, he said said okay yeah yeah he said okay yeah, really. okay and so you started filming for bon appetit right right after that or yes yeah, soon after that because we we probably met in september or october and then in november we went to greece or oh yeah, like yeah. late november early december we f- did the yeah. first trip for bon, uh, bon there's appetit. a whole montage at the towards the, uh, yeah. is it right after kale nuski's part yeah. or, i think yeah. yeah okay and that was like the first uh first trip okay that was in 2003 around there right or 2004 maybe Oh really? Okay. The first trip, oh, okay. late late 2002, and then we made most of the video in 2003. Okay. And it came out, uh, yeah, by uh, the end of the year, November or something. Okay. So this one was faster to make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and since then, it was all in Europe, basically, or most most of it in Europe. Yeah, yeah, we didn't shoot anything in America. Yeah, we were more productive. Yeah. Yeah. For sure.
I remember watching all these videos uh, when I started skating and uh, I felt like there was many, many years between all of them because they were so impactful. Uh, yeah. But actually, it's, it's funny to think that they were all within three or four years. Yeah. Uh, but they were all like uh, so mind blowing for me when I saw them the first time. Uh, yeah, in total, it was like uh, four years between the beginning of Manic Mati and then the release of, of uh, Bon Appetit, bon Appetit the yeah. trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And since then, no, no big video. And yeah. People keep asking me, when are you going to make another yeah, one? The like, next ah, uh, Bon Appetit. Or <laughs> can't be filming anymore like uh, you, you have to be out there all the time with skaters yeah. you know it's like a really it's like a exhausting i'm sure exhausting it's like yeah. a commitment yeah so yeah. it's okay to do it when you're young and you don't have a life you don't have a family yeah but like once, uh, and, once yeah. you grow up it's like that's a job for the young kids you know to to be sure. out there i mm. mean there's no rules so of course there's some people who've been doing it and they managed to do it really well i'm, I'm jealous like uh like Greg Hunt and and, oh, yeah. and and Mike Manzuri has still has been doing a lot of projects and sure. a lot of people out there, you know, they they managed to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's also uh, for me, I I stepped away from that also because I kind of got fed up of like doing these big projects that that take al almost two years yeah. to do. And I started to have more ideas and being more creative. So it started to become a frustration to spend so much time to be out there f collecting tricks. Yeah, yeah. But so you waste a lot of time and there's a lot of waiting yeah, time. I and see, yeah, You yeah. get kicked out. And I, I was like, I'm wasting too much precious time. And, and, yeah. and, and because of that, I cannot put uh, in action like some of I, some ideas I start to have. Mm -hmm. So then it became a... I started to change things, to adapt things, so then I could work on smaller projects and then and do a lot of different ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah, you, you, um, because yeah, as you said, filming a, a full video it takes forever, and and it's yeah. uh, like the actual filming is probably not m much fun. Uh, maybe just when the peop the person lands a trick or something, then it's yeah. like cool. But but all the process, going there, filming, uh, and and all that stuff yeah. must be very tiring and to work for two years and finally see the end result only then it must be yeah yeah a bit frustrating so uh was that kind of what made you want to transition more into photography uh was that was it at that time that you got more interested in photography right after sorry or i don't mean sorry i mean uh, bon appetit no no yeah. it was during uh it was during sorry that i started to shoot more pictures but it, it came um the first uh spark came mm -hmm. during uh, when shooting manic Mati. I remember a specific day we were at a UCI campus in Irvine, California, mm -hmm. like on these brown famous rails. And I was trying to shoot from like super far away, like long lens video. And I was like, oh, that's, it's kind of interesting to be far away, like not being with a fisheye. Yeah. I started to have like ideas of like uh, some compositions and angles. And I was like, oh, there's like, um, this could make a good picture. Mm-hmm. And then I was looking around like, oh, where's Atiba? And then on other stations, where where's the photographer? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. I start to have ideas of pictures, but they never they never shoot these pictures. Okay. So oh, I'm starting to have ideas that only me I'm I'm thinking of. Yeah, outside so, the box. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I should grab a camera and then uh, next time I try to to shoot a picture yeah, yeah, yeah. and see if it's a good idea if it looks good if it looks interesting mm -hmm. so that was the motivation to to start shooting pictures okay and uh, uh, certainly not to do something that was already existing so mm -hmm. it, it, it's because it was like uh, some some new ideas yeah yeah sure and also because it was like for me it was a way to to do something that was the opposite as i what i was doing with videography yeah. mm -hmm. shooting for a brand a uh, lot of fisheye in color for com commercial uh, issues and or like marketing mm -hmm. purposes so um, for me it was a way to uh, have a more personal approach on skateboarding which mm -hmm. was not only the commercial side of it but uh, skateboarding was also you know there was also different aspects about yeah. it yeah something more aesthetic more aesthetics yeah, yeah, yeah. and like uh, also we were like traveling the world to go to really good looking spots but then most of the time we would shoot with fisheye and then we wouldn't see the surroundings yeah the whole scenery so yeah. I was like that sucks we have this uh, amazing opportunity and chance to travel the world and we might as well show like the environment yeah. in which we 
we get to skate. So, sure. um, so that's what I wanted to do with the pictures to show, express something, something else that we I could not do with the videos that was lacking from the videos. Okay, yeah, yeah I see. So tech really the do the opposite, mm -hmm. shoot in black and white. So it's timeless. It it won't be attached to a certain era yeah. or fashion in in skateboarding. Right. Because I was really scared that like the videos we make right now. Maybe in 10 years, nobody cares anymore because mm -hmm. uh, the trends are like moving so the fast. that won't be as so cool you, or something. Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah or you're scared that uh, it doesn't edge really well and then, yeah, yeah. And then it gets flushed away, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I, of course, I was hoping to produce some stuff that would... It would be timeless. It would yeah. be timeless. It would be a part of skateboarding history. Yeah. And I really believe the videos were like not going to make, uh, not survive very long, which... Well, <laughs> you were wrong, yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, I was completely wrong. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm really happy now to see like 20 years after people... Yeah, talking, still talking about yeah, them. Yeah, still yeah. talking about it. And then uh, coming to me like, oh, I, st I started skating. And the first video I saw was Manic Maddie yep. or Sorry or Bon Appetit. Mm -hmm. And this changed my way of looking at skating as well. yeah that's yeah. great you know and that this is exactly what um, what you were aiming for yeah and, and what the what, as a kid when i first watched videos it was the same effect so, yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah. Um, of course one of the main motivation when making videos it, it, it's always been to like you're doing for a brand but also like of the video itself has to be good enough so that people when they watch it after they want to go yeah they want to go skate. skate yeah if if not then it's you fail it's yeah if you yeah. don't inspire people to go out and skate then the video sucks you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i completely agree with that for sure so you started shooting photos more uh and i think uh ed templeton was someone who was uh a big a bit of an inspiration for you in that sense when you first started exploring photography uh yeah can you tell me how how he helped you out or advised you or something well so i was starting to i was starting to shoot these pictures that were uh, specific to to me they were different from uh what everyone else was doing and I was not sure of why I was doing it or why, or I mean, and, and what would be the point and if it was a good idea, a good direction. I mean, the only culture I had about photography was through skateboarding, mm -hmm. what you will see in, in, in magazines. And Ed Templeton was like a really passionate photographer already. Mm -hmm. with a lot of culture yeah he knew like a lot about like uh, photography history and then all the the important photographers uh so when he looked at my pictures he started to see some things that were echoing some of the uh the masters of photography he, he, he liked okay so when we we traveled a lot together mm -hmm. uh, for the competitions in europe oh yeah and, yeah, yeah. and then uh, he was a world champion at some point uh, yeah Oh, before, yeah, before. Oh, maybe. that was before, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, I always looked up to Ed. Uh, yeah. It was someone I, I, I liked very much before uh, I started to go into the Hang skateboarding out with industry and, yeah, yeah. and I got out with him. And very so, creative person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. yeah, was different. It was like um, painting, doing photography. Yeah, there was something special about him that I, I didn't exactly know what it was, but like mm -hmm. he, he had like an, an aura. Yeah. And so one time we were in Paris and he, he said, hey, I'm going to go to this really good uh, photography bookstore mm -hmm. and you should come with me and I'll show you some stuff. Okay. So he was like uh, taking some books. Yeah, look at this one. Hey, look at this one. Take this one. Look at this one. Maybe buy this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, wow, I couldn't believe like all the photography I was discovering, like masters of photography, like, uh, like Joseph Kudelka, Henri Cartier-Bresson. Mm -hmm. like all these big names and and i looked at these pictures and i was like oh wow that's there's like um some similarities if, with if, your work if, yeah. what i do like with like this black and white and then small humans small uh, subjects oh, yeah, in yeah. pictures and i was like wow that's really cool and then by intuition intuition i was i started to do something that already exists in a way but yeah. like um And it, it works well in skateboarding, for skateboarding. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one day in the bookstore, yeah, I, I left with a lot of <laughs> a lot of books. It was really heavy. Yeah, I'm sure. But it was like an important time to that told me, okay, I'm on the right uh, path with yeah, photography yeah. in skateboarding. And so you started shooting photos. Right after um, Bon Appetit and Cliché, did you focus solely on photography or did you still do a little bit of filming here and there or... How was that uh, transition, basically, between the two? Photography. No, no, there's never been a transition. I've 
the main thing was always uh, videography. Okay. So I was still like uh, mostly working on, on video projects, smaller mm -hmm. ones or like just editing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. for... Uh, you did one for Antis recently, right? Uh, the André Gerlich yeah, very yeah. yeah. I did a couple of ones like the last uh, year. But then we, after Bon Appetit, I, I only did the editing of... Uh, no, we did El Jojo. Oh, you, you, you I are still, also... I made okay. El Jojo. Okay. But then after that, there was a Freedom Fries. So this one, I only done the editing. Okay. You didn't do mo most of the filming? No, I started to not film on everything and yeah, start yeah. to do like smaller projects. Was that when Boris Proust came in to do no, the... No, he came no. after. Okay. Yeah. There was someone else in between? S Mm, those different filmers. We, okay. I was filming. A, I was filming a little bit. Oh, there was. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, in Lyon there was a junior. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Signol, he was. Um, he started to film a lot, so he was like the main filmer. Okay. And I was like uh, the edi editor. Yeah. So more the mastermind, so to speak, uh, with yeah. the ideas, Ca and yeah. the concepts, kind of. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. But you weren't like on the on the spot filming the skaters as, as much as but you not were. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, no, I never really did the switch to photography because I, I didn't want to. I, I always wanted to do both. To keep uh, me, keep it, doing videos. Yeah. Okay. For me, they were complementary. Mm -hmm. And I would have been sad to only do photography. Okay. And I would have been sad to just Not do explore. videography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And so uh, I did both. But like video was always the main thing. So I never had so much time for photography. Mm -hmm. It always came secondary yeah on the sessions it always came at the very end of the session mm -hmm. i was filming and then i had an idea of like a picture to shoot so i had to wait at the end of the session after the guys were, will do their tricks or not mm -hmm. and then be like uh, ah yeah congrats it was a good trick but can you uh can we do uh, something else please but okay uh, five minutes we we'll just do something easy just do a kick flip here or tray flip on flat because I'm, I would never dare to ask them to do something uh, crazy uh, after, yeah. like, uh, mm -hmm. after skating hard. Mm -hmm. So I always did my pictures in these conditions at the very end, uh, as a last thing, without asking too much. Without yeah. Because also I was like, you know, I was always scared that they would, they could get hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we try to shoot something after after the real trick. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I was like not asking for too much. Yeah, that's happened a lot to skaters. I feel like uh, yeah, that they would hurt themselves trying to do a photo after filming a trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Redo the trick. Oh, I, yeah. I, I filmed it bad. Can you redo it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you get break hurt. your elbow oh. or something or yeah, Horrible. your ankle. So yeah. um, this was always uh, stressful. So that's why I always, um, that's why in my pictures, a lot of the tricks are easy tricks. Yeah, yeah. Because the, that's, that's yeah. This were the conditions I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was fine because by having the easy tricks, it's like the generic tricks and then it helps creating pictures that are timeless, more accessible and more universal yeah. to anyone. Exactly, because yeah. Because it's yeah. not like the latest trick and you don't know what's going on. It's more like uh, the... Um, the aesthetics and the photogeny and the, the choreography of the motion of the movement. So it was fine like that. It was perfect. Yeah. There's one photo that I really like. I think it's Luca Puig who does a switch flip on a like a bank. Um, kick flip, yeah. Oh, it's a kick flip? Yeah. Silhouette. Yeah, it's a silhouette. Yeah, yeah. So I, I thought he was skating switch on the thing. But, no, uh, no. It's yeah, not, but it's that, not that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we know that. But yeah, no, that that picture stands out. There's a bunch of pictures you made that are iconic, but that one st sticks out to me uh, because I'm such a huge uh, Luca yeah, yeah. Peak fan. So, but, but that um, one was also important because it was in Le Havre, okay. this crazy building uh, built by a Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer. I've never never heard about this this guy. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about architecture. Like okay. I didn't know anything about photography. So we got there and I was like, what the hell is this building? How come I never heard about it? It's yeah, in France, yeah. it's in Le Havre. It's crazy. And then it's uh, there's banks and transitions and yeah, yeah. there's a lot of spots. And I was like, I've never heard about it. Yeah, it's strange. Insane. Yeah, yeah. And this architecture is insane. So this was like a, a, so a, maybe one of the times where I clicked in, into like, wow, architecture like we we get yeah. we, we're getting exposed to crazy architecture and, and it's fascinating mm -hmm. and that's the game of skateboarding you always like uh, play with uh, architecture and then uh, and then and, uh, how to skate something that was not designed for skateboarding yeah yeah and so that, yeah we shot that picture uh, same thing at the end of the session hey lucas can mm -hmm. you come for five minutes please can you can you do a kickflip here yeah, yeah sure and so we got this really good photo 
Mm-hmm. And from that, yeah, from that time, I was like, oh, I'm going to try to now also look at like architecture and then bring scalars into like grandiose surroundings, uh, yeah. uh, environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that seems to be uh, some of the themes of your photos, like black and white uh, geometry yeah. and uh, architecture. Would you say that that's kind of what you're trying to work with yeah. for skate photos? Yeah, because we, yeah, as I said, we're exposed to like really beautiful places as opposed to also be in a really bad looking uh, spots yeah. sometimes, like in shitty uh, neighborhoods, mm -hmm. dirty streets. And sometimes you're like, wow, that's like epic, mm -hmm. uh, epic architecture. And which brings like uh, some stuff I could not explain, like why I was attracted. But like, yeah, there's geometry. There's like, a, it's it's a work of art, yeah. uh, architecture. So you get pieces of art. Yeah. And so if you can shoot pictures in this context, then you can make like really uh, yeah. strong pictures. That was my goal, to make pictures, like outstanding images mm -hmm. that had something special. And that um, if you see them, it wouldn't just be like... Um, a skate picture in a magazine yeah like a skate you know? trick like oh it's a kick flip on that a bank you, or that yeah it's it's really good yeah. looking you know at the moment but then you're gonna forget about it because yeah. there's like a it's like a constant uh production of yeah. content yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, how do i create something that's gonna be part of skateboarding uh, history yeah. you know or the, sure. the skate skateboarding world i mean with my videos and my photography I mean, I was so excited to be able to work in skateboarding with good conditions, the best skaters, travel the world, go to the best spots. And skateboarding gave so much to me. I was like, I want to give something back, you know, and that's something that uh, maybe is going to stay, mm -hmm. you know. And then mm -hmm. I was happy, of course, that uh, the frangle, the, the yeah. famous angle, uh, rolling long lens that I, I developed for uh, Manic Matty, yeah, it, it did stay. It did become yeah, a, a, an a institution. In, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 in skateboarding uh, videos. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's that's great, you know, to yeah. contribute to a community, to contribute to a culture, to inspire other people. And yeah, skateboarding gave me so much. I mean, in school, I was like really bad. I had no idea what I was going to do uh, after I'm 20. Mm -hmm. and skateboarding like it's a cliche but skateboarding saved my life really yeah it and paved the way for you my life yeah. would have been shitty i think mm -hmm. uh, without skating so yeah I'm really fortunate to be here to still be here and, and well you worked hard for it i mean nobody did it for you so yeah yeah of yeah. course uh, you, you like pro skaters too you know they, they're yeah. skating hard they're working hard it's it's they have natural talent but still it's like a, it's an effort mm -hmm. nothing comes for free nothing comes easy but uh, we we're really fortunate to have found skateboarding and be able to do something with it you know yeah. and then it, it paved our life you know it, it mm -hmm. was like a I mean, it is the most important thing in my life because yeah. then it, it, it brought a lot of different things. It opened everything up for you, yeah, yeah. basically. Let's talk a little bit about, um, I know that you collaborated with uh, Leica and you were also like an element advocate. I wasn't too not sure. Not anymore. Okay, so not yeah. anymore. But uh, what did these uh, collaborations uh, entail, basically? What were you doing for, for either brands? Like, were you kind of like a brand ambassador or...? or well, Element, yeah, I was like a Element advocate, and um, I jumped uh, onto the uh, to the boat to work on video projects. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to uh, build up like a creative team of different artists uh, with like Ray Barbie, Thomas Campbell. It's Thomas oh, yeah. Campbell who got me on board. Okay, and it was really the idea to work uh, as a collective on projects such as like the like the peace video, like uh, the, the the main video project. Mm -hmm. And eventually also did like a lot of uh, photography and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in the end, we couldn't really do, uh, it didn't really happen like the way it was originally planned. We never got to really build up this creative team and really work on a project together. Okay. So in the end, it was like a bunch of diff little different projects. And then eventually I, I prefer to, uh, to get my freedom back, be able to work on some stuff uh, on my own working with brands is, is always it's always good because you they bring something they, they, they have a team they have energy they have yeah. budget uh, projects and everything and all the brands i've been working with 
all these videos I've been making, it's I've been making videos for them. You know, it's like um, I have my ideas, but I'm working for a brand. So yeah, I give, uh, it's I, not a personal project. No, yeah. I, I know that like we have to do something to adapt to the brand, which is yeah. absolutely normal and fine. And, and it, it was really good to do like this. It's also why I came to photography to have this freedom yeah. to do stuff for me mm -hmm. and have this freedom. And over the years, yeah, I really enjoy to have this freedom mm -hmm. and then to work uh, as freelance, you know, not being uh, full time Attached with a company. Attached to a company, yeah, yeah. So I like this format and then um, it was good to work with Element mm -hmm. for some years. It was like, uh, it was cool, there was security and, and, and the idea to work with other people. But then after that, it was good to also uh, get this uh, freedom back because at, at some point you're like, oh, I've, yeah, the freedom is, is important. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. I'm still working with brands like uh, on occasions, mm -hmm. like with Antis right now. It's, um, yeah. yeah, we talked about that. For me, it's good yeah. to be freelance. So mm -hmm. I, I have the freedom to do what I want if Move I want to. Move from a project to another. and yeah. yeah, or work outside of skateboarding because also, that's yeah. also something I really wanted to do was not being right. stuck in skateboarding. Mm -hmm. As much as I love it, uh, for me to have a proper balance, it's important to do other things like in music or other mm -hmm. worlds. So yeah, it's been good to do be freelance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about Le Leica? What was your collaboration and with them? So Leica was completely different. It was more like a, yeah, like a collaborations on occasions. But uh, the, I was really happy that it, it did happen because um, for many years I was shooting my, my pictures without being published much in um, skate magazines because they were like specific and not really fitting the format mm. of skate magazines. So for many years, I really like, I stick to this, this uh, style I developed mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do any compromise to adapt to the magazine, to, to be more published. I was like, uh, no, I just want to stick to that and, and, and keep building it up. Mm -hmm. Even though it was not commercially wise, it was not good. You know, I was not selling yeah. much pictures. I was not being published much. Right, right. So I kept going for many years and eventually this connection with Leica came years after like starting to work on this style and, and, and they liked it a lot. And, and suddenly, yeah, building this body of work uh, made sense like six or seven years after starting. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, yeah, that's exactly why I never made compromise. That's, that's why I, I kept doing it because I, I believed in it. And then eventually, oh, now it, a brand like Leica, like the most, uh, you know, yeah, prestigious, iconic, yeah, iconic yeah. brand in photography. It fits exactly their yeah, needs. So absolutely, it's yeah. perfect, mm -hmm. and that's why I was. Uh, it was always important for me to do something different mm -hmm. and believe in something that, okay, commercially wise, it yeah. sucks, but uh, artistically wise, it's yeah. important. So yeah, it speaks to me. Yeah, so yeah. then it was like um, starting to do stuff with Leica. I was like, uh, it was a confirmation that yeah. you know, I was I, a recognition I, of yeah. your talent as a photographer. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of a side question, but uh, I know that you were on the um, you were present when Jaws did the all the Ollie at the twenty five stair set. Yeah. Did you also film when Ali tried it uh, in yes, the early two thousands? Yeah. So you were you were present on both times. Yeah. And so just basically, I was just curious to know how it how you felt. I think it was just it wasn't just one day because he came a first time and oh, hurt yeah. himself. Yeah. And then he came back a few months or maybe a year later. Yeah. And it took a few tries and you had to deal with like security. Then come back. Then yeah. uh, and we had to get like it was a, a whole permission. process. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. a pff, nightmare. Stressful nightmare. Yeah, I'm sure. And I hate this spot now. I don't <laughs> want to go anymore. Yeah. Although I'm sure. it's it's right there. It's like a oh, it's, it's okay. ten minutes walk from here. Yeah, actually I <laughs> wanted to maybe I'll go check it out yeah, when yeah. I when I leave from yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's incredible to see in uh, in person. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just uh, how how did you feel uh, the, the day he made it? Basically, because it it must have been quite a a relief, basically, to uh, see it finally. Uh, yeah, it uh, was a relief happen. because I was I was really stressing first because you can get hurt. Yeah, of course. You don't yeah. know what can happen, mm -hmm. and he already got hurt like the first yeah. time, so things can go wrong on that spot. Yeah. And Ali got hurt as well, and and he, I mean it was only always bruises and. 
torturing knees and stuff like that. Yeah. But it could be worse. You know, yeah, you, you never could know. Smash your head on the ground or whatever. So yeah. in the first place, it's stressful for that because uh, I've always been scared for the skaters. You know, you don't yeah. want them to get hurt. Of course. And also the conditions were like we got kicked out like in a bad way, and then we mm -hmm. they came especially to do it, and he came back after like getting hurt like uh, six months before. Mm -hmm. So then we had to get permission, and uh, the timing was like shitty. So for this case, I because I was the French guy, the local yeah, guy. I yeah, then yeah. I then I became the team manager guy, the <laughs> production yeah. guy, yeah. having to deal with uh, security, calling people to get a contact with the city uh, executives, and then trying to get permission. It was like a yeah, nightmare. Whole like, process. Yeah, I it's was, crazy. This was so stressful. So when it came to the day when w finally we could skate with like permission. Uh, I was like uh, not focused at all anymore into filming. Yeah. So you just uh, wanted it to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So I filmed, but like uh, I remember I was scared, so I was shaky. I, I oh, had yeah. to stabilize my footage because. Uh, did I, you I, have like a stabilizer thing or, or? Yeah, but like in post production, I had to. to oh, work to on the, the footage feature. a bit. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. actually, even like it was not perfectly uh, sharp, like it was a little okay. blurry because I didn't set up my camera properly. I was mm -hmm. just like not focused. I was like for yeah. security and we have like one hour only and this and that and there's people Damn. and this oh, it was like <laughs> too much stuff yeah, to deal with it must have been stressful for sure yeah. and uh, when it was over I was like ah fuck it I'll never come back here I don't <laughs> want to uh, yeah. and, and it's actually some people told me they wanted to come and, and try do to do something do a kickflip <laughs> and if I could uh, film I was like no way man, <laughs> I, I want, you're like the designated I, I thought spot this thing was yeah. over like this I don't want to have to come here yeah. e ever again I know it was like the one, the the most stressful time in skateboarding. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I think he broke his tail or something when he when he yeah, landed. He cracked right? his tail, which yeah, uh, it helped. absorbed a bit of the yeah, impact. Yeah, it absorbed. Yeah, otherwise. Yeah, because you know, the ground looks very slippery at the bottom, so it looks like it looks almost in, like very hard no, to skate. But it's like I think yeah. the problem is the compression. Oh uh, yeah, the pressure like too when high. You, you land on the board. The feet, they, they can't, they, they just slip. They just slip, slip yeah. They just yeah. slip because they can't stay on the board. And then yeah. Jules tried a, f a first day and then a, I think a second day. And then finally we came back a third day. And I was looking at the footage in slow motion. I was like, he's never going to make yeah, it. Yeah, it's not going to happen. No yeah, one can yeah. take this impact. Yeah. It looks like the impact is just too strong to yeah. absorb it. I think that that was the case until, yeah, he cracked his board and, and the board, the tail just like touched the ground when you look at slow motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that was the trick. <laughs> yeah, I it's think. so fast Otherwise, that you almost uh, don't see it. It's no, so, in yeah. real motion, you don't see it, but yeah. uh, the board is completely like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And without that, I think he, he wouldn't have made it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, although, you know, it's, it's impressive, uh, the commitment he yeah, just had. Yeah, still, and, still and insane. And the, the, yeah. the belief. Mm -hmm. And he was like, fuck yeah, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to make it. Yeah. In total, he tried like 26 times, I think I counted. It it's was crazy. insane. Like yeah. uh, over like uh, four different days, but um, his body must be in such a such a wreck. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he skates still a lot today. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's insane. But he was smart because he yeah. he used that downhill thing. There's, there's oh, this yeah, yeah, one yeah. bit where you, you save a lot of energy for yeah. the run up. Ali that didn't uh, do no. that. Okay, that was really smart. And then when uh, Aurelien Giraud tried it, he, he did it same as Ali, just running and, and pushing. Mm -hmm. And phew, that was insane. He could have really made it. Yeah. That's crazy. He's so uh, strong and, and solid. And oh, he's, he's an athlete, for, so yeah. yeah, he could probably do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, he, if he tried for a long yeah. time, he would definitely. I was just really surprised. I was like, what the hell is going through his mind? Like trying yeah. a few months before the Olympics. Like yeah. it was supposed to happen like this. Yeah, in, in 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. So he tried it like in March or something. Uh, I was like, why do you try this? Yeah, like, you're you, can, you can you, get hurt you for. You could kill uh, yourself. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wow, that's insane. Mm. Yeah, maybe one day he'll do a, like a kickflip backside 360 over <laughs> it or something. Uh, if someone can do a crazy trick on there, he probably can. Well, but, uh, he did, yeah. yeah, like that trick 360 kickflip like he did in uh, in Paris. Yeah, in that, defense, uh, that defense. That yeah. double set. Yeah, it's I insane. Mean, I've been to that double set with Bastian and, and, yeah. and Tom Penny, who just did Oli. Bastian did backside kickflip, yeah. which was insane. Backside yeah, it's already kickflip was like crazy. Yeah. I was like, wow, this was like the biggest uh, double set in Paris, the biggest stairs for a long time, and, and nobody was skating it or just mm -hmm. do Ollies. And when Bastian did the backside flip, backside 180 flip, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, like and the when spot I see is Aurelien shut down. skating it, like switch frontside flip. 
Nolly Hard Flip 180. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is an uh, alien from a yeah. different planet. Yeah, the progression. And, and uh, I mean, that's him today. But let's imagine in 10 years from now, what's, where skating is going to go. It's pretty, pretty insane. But uh, Yeah, but also it also came back to slappies and stuff like yeah, that. So well, yeah, that was really cool. To, uh, mm. It also came back to something easy that anyone can do. Mm. And like the older guys, like yeah. they don't have to stop skating at, at 35. Like we I always believed after 30, uh, people yeah, uh, that's you're it, done. You have to retire. Yeah. I mean, some people did back then. In the early 90s, there were people that when they turned at 30, they stopped skating. Yeah, sometimes even before that, yeah, like 25, 27 yeah. or something. Yeah. So uh, the idea of skating after 40, it was like no way. And mm. now it's like uh, when Instagram came and you see... Uh, everyone's skating people older than you doing slappies you're like oh fuck mm-hmm. yeah i can uh, yeah i know how to do that i can do it and uh, oh, yeah it's it was like um refreshing really good motivation for yeah. like uh, not give giving up on skating because yeah. i think a lot of people a lot of people stopped and then started again because they were like seeing like all the guys or people their edge yeah having fun uh doing slappies or stuff like you know mini ramp and yeah yeah, yeah. so all right, so just to, f- to finish, before I, I um, have you listen to the questions from your friends, I uh, just want to talk a bit about your current work. It would take forever again to uh, go through everything you're involved in right now, but uh, just to mention a few things that you've done in, in recent times. You did some uh, commercials for Hermes. I wasn't sure how, what your involvement was with this, but the, you, you talked about it on your Instagram, this thing called Archipel, which was like a skate and dance performance, uh, if I can call it that. Yeah. And uh, you also did, uh, but that was a little while ago, the, the Cuatro Sueños Pequeños with uh, Thomas Campbell. You mentioned him earlier. Yeah. And I think you also did something with Alexandre Astier. So the, the English listeners probably won't know what yeah. that is, but it's, uh, he's basically the creator of a TV show, very famous TV show called Camelot in France. And about you, the, uh, the, uh, the Knights King, of the, yeah, King Arthur. Yeah, Knights of the Round Table. table yeah, and, uh, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so it would probably take too long to go through everything, but uh, basically what, what are your current projects? What are you working on right now? Well, this, like I said, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm really interested into working on in different, um, different worlds. Like, mm-hmm. um, of course, skateboarding, but I like to work in music. Mm-hmm. I like to work in uh, cinema, I had this opportunity. And I, I, sometimes I work in uh, gastronomy for champagne. Oh, yeah? After working so long in skateboarding and developing a style, especially in photography, mm-hmm. um, uh, for me, I, I like to uh, try to uh, apply this style to into, something different to something different and also something different that I, I don't really know i'm like right yeah. now i'm also working in a classical music apart from listening to uh, some records you know I, yeah. I don't have any culture into this and i don't know the codes of like uh, how you shoot classical yeah, yeah. music but uh, i've been doing it because people came to catch me because uh, they liked uh, your work they uh, with want skateboarding. something different they, they, they expect to produce something that's that's different from the usual things you see mm-hmm. in uh, like classical music because uh, yeah as everything it gets formatted so um, yeah they like what i do in skateboarding they like what they, what i do in architecture so uh, they ask me um, uh, this band I work with, they ask me to work with them, and it, it's it's going really well because uh, for me it's really fun. Yeah, I have like a total freedom, and they're really happy. Mm-hmm. And so I I do apply some techniques from skateboarding. I I, I didn't shoot with a fisheye for a long time, and then suddenly I start to shoot fisheye for classical music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But also, it's uh, it's always been uh, uh, the beginning when I was working a lot into music and skateboarding at the same time. Mm-hmm. So in music, I was bringing some techniques from skateboarding, and then I would bring back into skating some techniques learned into music. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, interesting to work in different fields, so that you learn different things, you think different because you you forget about skating, and so you can come back with fresh mind and and new ideas and new techniques because i've always wanted to no matter what i do i always want to do it you know bring something personal bring something different than yeah. what, what already exists we all are creative persons we all are different we all have a certain perspective on the world so uh, why doing uh, what everyone else is doing you know yeah yeah, yeah. We exactly are, we're all individuals so we can mm. bring your own thing yeah, 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 which is Absolutely. not easy to to step out, to step away from uh, formats, and to kind of like turn your back on trends. Because when something is trendy, 
the yeah. normal thing is to to, to go it, along yeah to, to go to, along yeah, to yeah. exist uh, sure and if you if you go the other direction you might not exist yeah. at that time it's a risk yeah. it's a risk but uh you might exist uh, or your work might become interesting uh and long term i always think long term i, I don't yeah. want to follow trends but uh, you when i do that you're like i'm like ah fuck i'm out of the trend and uh, <laughs> i'm like not following what's going on and then you mm -hmm. yeah it makes you away mm -hmm. and it's a strange feeling you have to be strong to uh, uh but i'm not always strong about it it's uh, sometimes i feel like oh I yeah I you right have your to doubts do that? you know you yeah. have doubts and but i think um yeah trends uh they can be really good and they can suck ass really <laughs> really, really much just as much <laughs> yeah yeah for sure all right so I have questions from your friends. I have just one very last question uh, before yeah. that. It's uh, just basically, it's a kind of a philosophical question in the sense that uh, I just want to, I'm just curious to know what's, what's something that you would say is the best lesson you, you've learned from skateboarding, whether it's uh, through filming or actually skateboarding or shooting yeah. photos or the people you've met, whatever. What kind of sticks out to you from that whole experience in skateboarding? The most important thing I learned from skateboarding is uh, adaptation. Mm -hmm. so you have to, to adapt all yep. the time with skateboarding because you go in the streets and you skate a spot that's mm -hmm. not made for skateboarding. So you have to adapt to it, turn mm -hmm. it into a spot deal with uh, the people who don't want you to skate and deal with the weather, deal with the conditions, deal mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of things. So mm -hmm. you have to adapt all the time. And this, uh, it helps me uh, every day in my life, in my professional life, having to uh, adapt to difficult conditions when you're making a film. Even when you're working on a big production uh, where there's a lot of money and then a lot of professionals, but there's always uh, things that go wrong. Yeah, well, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you... Especially on a big production, like if there's something going wrong, people are not really, uh, they might not be ready to uh, adapt. Yeah. And because uh, for me, I come from skateboarding and I have to adapt all the time. There's many situations where I did manage some uh, difficult situations and like, okay, well, we, we, have, we have to find a solution. Although yeah. it looks like uh, now we're fucked. No, we have to find a solution, and that I will I go pick stuff from my skateboarding experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's like the most important thing in this time right now. People, uh, when you work with companies and brands and agencies and creatives, and when you can adapt, they really like it because yeah. they're not they don't have that background. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay. For skaters, it's like a really uh, it's an important thing they have they learn. Yeah, valuable lesson. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, it's valuable uh, um, against other people who come from more like uh, traditional experiences of and who of work will, and will life. probably give up faster or or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's finish with the questions from your friends. So this this first one, I'll just read it out loud because I don't have the audio, but yeah. it's from uh, Pierre André Senizag. We we actually mentioned him at the very beginning. He just asked, "What's your favorite part from Minik Mari? And when are you coming back to California?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hope to come back to California. It's been a long time. There's a lot of stuff I want to do there, but I don't want to go for too long. I can go for two weeks and then uh, not, <laughs> not too long. longer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And favorite part in Minik Mati? Uh, I don't know if he meant uh, the the part of someone or like, or um, like in general. In general yeah, 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 I'm not sure what he meant, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say anything very specific, but like uh, for me, it was like the first opportunity to start traveling in the world. Mm -hmm. I went to Brazil, Japan, Europe and America and I quickly realized it was a chance and um, it was like a really good opportunity to uh, wow, yeah. discover the world, travel for free, meet skaters, pro skaters. So the whole, the whole thing was like really... Yeah. The whole experience. Yeah, the whole experience was great. And, then he, mm -hmm. and that's why I worked like nonstop every day for a, a year and a half because I was like, a, I knew it. I was super lucky to, to be in this position. And it was like my dream to yeah work in skateboarding, you know. Mm -hmm. Did the year and a half include the editing or yeah. was that extra? Yeah, I think, yeah. Because it, it must have taken a long time to edit the whole video, like a few months at least, right? Yeah. So oh, at least long two one, or so. three months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we were still like filming also at the same time. I was editing at night and yeah, yeah, it was, wow. uh, 
crazy schedule i'm sure <laughs> yeah. yeah when the editing was done i was like super tired oh super, yeah super tired yeah ben told me the same thing about finishing europa uh he finished editing right before the premiere in paris and he was uh completely uh, exhausted during the premiere he basically was a ghost watching the movie with everybody in oh yeah so but yeah. i was scared for the premiere of manic Mati. i was scared because you work for so long yeah and then uh, of course you have a lot of pressure And I, I imagine that people during the screening, they will go crazy. Uh, yeah, like uh, react and, and react clap during or, the tricks. And yeah. they were silent the whole time. <laughs> really? I was like, no, what's going on? But they were just like... Oh, they were oh, so impressed. God. Yeah, yeah. So impressed. So yeah. I was like, the whole time I was just like, <gasps> yeah, feeling really bad. And at the end, at the end of it, Pierre-André was in front of me. He turned around and he was crying. And oh, I was really? Like, oh, all right. Okay. So, Good yeah. job. We, we, made, we, made, it, we yeah. made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'll have you listen to this first question. Salut Fred. So here's my question. I'm wondering if you're interested to develop more uh, projects with you being on the director's side, whether commercials or documentary or fiction. Uh, do you have any dream project you would like to work on? Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. That's Julian. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Julian Nickmans. Yeah, I'm more interested, uh, like is like what you said, Julian. I'm more into um, as far as uh, videography and and film. I'm more into being on the uh, directing side of things because uh, I didn't follow up the all, all the uh, the technology evolution of of video. Like now, it's really technical. There's really yeah. crazy cameras, and I I never owned like a red camera or stuff like that. I can't, oh, yeah, I yeah. can't properly operate uh, something on my own. So uh, I'm happy to work with people who do it really well good deal yeah. please and then focus on uh, the, the creative part because uh if i start to deal with the cameras myself oh, it's, yeah it's chaos yeah I'm i can't sure. even charge a gopro <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're gonna stick to the creative uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh it can be yeah it could be in any kind of field the commercial uh, documentaries or anything that feels good you know that feels interesting mm -hmm. I'm, i'm lucky enough to be able to pick my projects so yeah mm -hmm. i usually get to work only on stuff that i like and then um a dream project uh i don't know i have some projects in in photography that i would like to do i will need to have time to be able to travel to go document some specific things it's more into photography right now that i want to to work on a specific personal projects mm -hmm. but they require time and i can never make it happen because uh your crazy work schedule yeah and i try to do less video because video is super time consuming takes all my time mm -hmm. yeah, video editing filming uh, color grading sound uh, mixing uh, exporting uh, promotion for instagram it's like yeah. a never ending list of things to do yeah exactly and it takes um I i'd like to be able to do yeah to do it less and then work to do more photography projects mm -hmm. but as i said try to find a balance so i can do both because i i love editing uh video parts to mu skate parts yeah. to, with music you know yeah, yeah, something yeah. i love to do like editing skateboarding to music uh it's something i want to keep on uh, on doing and right now we get to do it with uh, antis yeah so yeah it's cool it's like yeah on very cool and so yeah Are they working on a full video or are you... No, no, no not right more now. More doing parts for... And I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But okay. Uh, no, 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 they're doing... Uh, no, it's like a smaller project. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this one, I don't know if you'll recognize the voice. You'll, you'll let me know. Hi, Fred. I would like to ask you if you ever thought or planned to go in a new kind of direction like photo journalism or some kind of narrative video documentary. I think, for example, your visual talents would make great things for subjects like climate change or societal issues or inequality. Bye-bye. Thank you. Damn, who's that? That's uh, Ben Doren. Oh, that's Ben. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But his voice is a bit... Uh, I don't know, maybe he got COVID or something, but <laughs> <laughs> his, his voice is a bit different than I, what I remember, yeah. <laughs> so uh, well, that's so, a good yeah. question because um, for a long time, and it's been uh, more than a decade and more than that, since I've been working in entertainment or mm -hmm. making skate videos, yep. uh, it's been, uh, yeah, many, many years I've been also wanting to use my 
photography or or my uh, videography to uh, approach a topic that's like uh, that I can do something useful that it's not just entertainment yeah yeah, yeah, but yeah. like uh, address like a problem or do a documentary do uh, something that will make people think about some issues mm -hmm. and so yeah I've never really been able to do it so much that's something I want to do and also mm -hmm. in photography But I've I've just done it with the the latest uh, project uh, I've put out in photography the, with Subterraneo magazine from Argentina. Yes, I saw you posted a few things about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We made this uh, little uh, special issue called the uh, reset, and this is exactly uh, about that, like uh, using my photography, using my perspective, my vision of the world to approach topics that are like uh, difficult and need like some thinking. It's a way to uh, bring something else than the traditional medias we have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also uh, taking the uh, the opposite side of Instagram, on which uh, life seems perfect. Everything seems like uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah. has a perfect life on Instagram. Yeah. But like this creates like a strange reality, mm -hmm. like an illusion that everything is ri is going right when we all know that everything is going wrong. Yeah. So um, for me, it's important to uh, use my work to talk about things like that and then uh, encourage or invite people to have a li uh, some thinking about it and maybe it will uh, inspire them to uh, adapt, to change on their own side or inspire other people or... Mm -hmm. At least we just, uh, you know, exchange about some, some more difficult topics. So, yeah, I want to do that more. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Very last question from another cliche friend. Fred, you have been one really talented videographer and photographer. If you had to choose only one medium, which one would it be? That's impossible. Did you recognize the voice? Or? No. <laughs> In English, it's, uh, it's uh, Eric Frenet. Oh, it's Eric. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I knew a, a question <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, we talked about it before. I, I don't want to have to choose between yeah, exactly, uh, video yeah. or film and photography mm -hmm. because they're complementary. So if I do only one of them, uh, then I'm sad because I'm missing yeah. the other one that's bringing something else. Mm -hmm. But then along my career, I, I always try to mix them mm -hmm. as much as possible. So... Um, That's why I used a lot of photography. I started to use pictures in Bon Appetit. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And then I started to make some videos. Like I made this video, hybridation, uh, that was like a video, but shot as like photography in a way. Okay. I, I, I like to, to play with both mediums yeah. and try to mix them. and, and Have them echo one yeah. another, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they have, they allow to express yourself differently. That's not comparable, so... Both are important. And I've always think like that. And then right now we're in a time where, um, I mean, photography is important, but video also. So mm -hmm. uh, clients start to ask you like, uh, yeah, can you, um, yeah, we want to ask you to shoot photos, but can you also make a little video? Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, oh, yes, yes, uh, cool. But um, at least I, I'm happy that I can do both. You yeah, know? well, yeah. Because it's not everyone who can, yeah. who can be working on both. So Exactly, yeah. Usually people are really good at one thing and not as good at the other one, but uh, you seem to be... But usually really they ask you to both, do both so. with the same budget. So then I oh, say yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, I think uh, we can wrap it up here. I could ask you a, a thousand other questions, but uh, we've talked for long enough. So. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's always interesting to, to share like my experience, my stories, and, and uh, because I know it can inspire some other people. So yeah, it's, yeah. Always, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You've been a huge inspiration my entire life. So it was an honor. Thank you so much. Oui, oui. That's it for my conversation with Fred Martin. You can follow Fred on his Instagram accounts at FrenchFred for his skateboarding work and at FrenchFredPhoto, F-O-T-O, for his wider approach of photography. Also, go visit his website FrenchFredStudio.com and if you've never seen his iconic videos Manic Mari, Sorry and Bon Appetit, do yourself a favor and go watch them wherever you watch skate videos. Thank you for tuning in. See you soon for a new episode of Beyond Boards. Mm -hmm.